Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning. Let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Just thank you for your faithfulness and always being true, always being there for us, always just being there and, and sharing your love in our heart and letting us know that you're with us and that you're for us and, and that we can rest in you and in your promises. And so we just give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So um, I want to jump in to, I'm going to start in 1 Samuel. And God kind of put something in my heart. Um, And um, as I was reading, I read this, I've read this story a million times. And there are some that jumped out to me that I hadn't really seen in a like maybe I seen it, but it really didn't hit me like it hit me. And that's what's awesome about the Bible, because it's alive, right? The Bible says that the Word of God is alive. It's quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, right? So, so it's, got, it's got dimensions to it, to it that would take us an eternity to live, right? Like sometimes we just read the literal, and, and um, that's where we can take, take it and we can get what they call the logos, or which is good. Logos is good, but there's the rhema too, the spirit part of it. And the rabbis say that that you can take take the logos part or or the literal part, and you can cut someone's head off with it, and you can do a whole lot of damage with it, right? So so when you're studying in Hebrew, there's like different layers, right? And so so they understand that there's more depth than just this, 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 right? It also can mean this, 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 but it also goes deeper. Like it's got, it's got width and it's got depth and it's got breath and it goes forever and ever. It's got breath and breath, right? They say, you can't talk. Well, that's, there's a D in there. I'm from, I'm from Oklahoma. No one throws a D in that, right? And so, so um, is expansive. It's unlimited and we can trust God's word. Don't get so caught up in just the literal. Take the literal, like when it says, do, thou shalt not kill. I mean, kind of don't do that, right? There's some good in the literal, right? But you can take the same literal and you can kill somebody, maybe, maybe not physically, but emotionally and mentally with, with that same thing. So, so don't just go literal. Understand there's a depth to this word. And that's why the spirit brings life, right? It's the spirit. It's the spirit that comes up. It flows in us, but it's flowing completely through this word. And we can trust God and trust what he says. He says, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my my spirit, says the Lord, right? It's not about, it's not about how strong you are. It's not about how strong everyone else is around you, but it's about the power of his spirit. It was the spirit who breathed life and hovered over the face of the earth. And God said, let there be. And boom, there was. The scripture says that that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will make alive this, our our mortal bodies, right? So so there's power in the spirit. And so, so we have that even with laws or with the constitution. They say, well, that doesn't say that in the Constitution, but they'll say, oh, but in the spirit of this law or in the spirit of this rule, there's more behind it than just what's written. There's a heart in there behind the words. Does that make sense? And so when you speak, because you are a spirit, when you speak, you're you're actually, um, um, it's your spirit. You can bring life to someone, or you can kill someone by what you're saying. You say, well, I ain't kill no one. Well, one bet, we all have. We, we've done it with our, with our tongue, right? It's the most deadly weapon in the universe, right, is our tongue, because it has power, right? So it's, 
important for us to understand the, the spirit and how God's moving in our lives and that he wants to move in and through us and to work. And he's in everything, right? And so um, science says that everything's energy, right? They say, say nothing's created and nothing's destroyed. Well, guess what? You know why, why nothing's created? Because everything's already been created. Because God said it's finished. But it was finished. But the, the universe at that word of God is still expanding exponentially. And what it's saying is, is that creation's already finished. Everything that was ever needed to be done has been done, but you're still seeing the work of that finished work coming to fruition. Does that make sense? It's the same thing with our salvation. It's finished, right? Everything is done. Everything is complete. But sometimes we're still not, like maybe we're still, we're still growing in that creation. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. Be all hold, all things become new. Well, when do they become new? As we walk it out. We walk by faith. We're becoming new. The old's passing away. We're becoming new, and we're walking into who God created us to be and the finished work that, that he paid for on the cross with you in mind before creation even started. Now, when you think about that, that's a mouthful. That's a lot of fancy words for a cowboy to say. Because only the Holy Spirit can bring that up. Only the Holy Spirit can, can prompt you to have a wisdom and an understanding to see beyond just the physical. Like, you see this chair here? How I many you know that chair is in a chair form? But it's not just a chair. It's molecules. Do you know how many molecules are in that? When you think about what everything is made up of, energy and molecules and, 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 and really the spirit, right? And so, so it's like we're seeing it one way, but if I can see it that one way and, and it's just molecules, energy, then everything's subject to change, right? Someone had the ideal to create something and they created a chair, which most of you guys are thankful for right now because these are pretty <laughs> padded soft chairs, right? And so when we understand that, it, it, helps, it helps us when we go back into the Word and we're reading the Word, then we can see beyond what, what, um, what we just read. Um, the names are very powerful in Hebrew. Like you, I'm reading in 1 Samuel verse 16, and, and the name Saul in Hebrew literally means in Hebrew, asked for. You remember how Saul come about? Like, they're like, we need a king. We need a human king. Can you please give us a human king? It's like, like, is God, you know, you led us out of slavery. You know, I appreciate the Passover thing. Right? I appreciate coming, you know, out of Egypt with all the silver and gold and land and wealth or wealth and all this. I appreciate you getting us into the promised land. I appreciate you getting us through the wilderness. I appreciate the manna from heaven and the cloud by day and the fire by night. I appreciate that you did all that, but you know something? We really would like a man to lead us. Thank you, God, for all you did, but we want a man to lead us. We want some, something that, that we can touch physically, that we can see physically, and that we can obey physically. See, they were free from Egypt, but that same slavery mentality had crept in and stayed in in their culture and in their heart, and they hadn't totally got to a point where they, they relied completely on God. I was listening to a, to a podcaster guy I really, really like. He's actually, he, he, his family immigrated from Iran when he was younger, and he's a believer in Jesus, and he's, these atheist guys were on the podcast with him, and they go, like, why do you believe in God? And he's like, Everyone has a God. You have a God. He's like, like you're a young, handsome guy. It might be girls. It might be drinking. It might be cars. It might be money. It might be yourself. It might be your hair. It might be your looks. Everybody has a God, whether they're believing in Jesus or not. You're going to have a God that you put up. You're going to have an idol that you follow, whether it's Jesus or not. 
I just choose to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't want to have to follow no man. Why would I follow a man when I have the King of kings, the creator of the universe who lives in and through me? Like, I'm, I'm, I, I always got this. They always say it. Say, my uncles used to say that. You know what? I ain't going to church. I'm just going to go ride out on my horse and I'll talk to the man upstairs. And I was like, where's the stairs? <laughs> Like, how are you getting the stairs? And how are you going to get the horse to climb the stairs anyway, right? Where, where's the stairs, right? I'm going to go talk to the man upstairs. And then I heard that today. And it, someone said, well, you know, the man upstairs. And as I grow in my faith, it kind of insults me a little bit. Because what it's saying, religion says you're separated and God's way up here. And you're way down here. The, the gospel is Christ with us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. When he said, said his name will be Emmanuel, that didn't mean God upstairs. That meant God where? God with us. Christ in us. If you're going to hide something, we're the last place you'd look to find God. Some of you are like, yeah. So, like, find the nastiest person you know, and God's hiding in there. He's trying to break out, trying to say, hey, I want to love you because he's in all things, whether you like it or not, right? Some people have received him and some people are getting ready to. Like, I try to be optimistic, right? But it's God's love and God's peace and God's grace and his presence. When I was running from him, like, I had enough of church and being a preacher's kid and I got really hurt bad and I was like, I ain't, I ain't ever going to church again. I don't want nothing to do with God. Well, I wasn't mad at God, but I was mad at church. But I was like, you know what? I'm going away. And everywhere I would go, I'd run into God. And every time I ran into him, I was expecting him to be like the people at the church that hurt me, that were mean and legalistic and, and harsh and, and cruel. And I ran into a God who was like, hey, son, how you doing? And I'm like, what are you doing here? You're, you're supposed to stay in there. Or you're, you're supposed to stay upstairs. What are you doing here? How, how am I running into you? And he's like, he's like, well, it's hard to run from someone who's everywhere. And it's hard to run from someone who loves you unconditionally. And that unconditional love is what arrested my heart to where now I want to I wanna serve him, not out of fear, or obligation, but out of a thankfulness and a relationship and saying, wow, <laughs> you're always there for me. You like, no matter what I do, no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, you always come like you don't always agree with what I do. And then that's when we get that conviction. Hey, why'd you do that, son? You're a bull you're, you're a king. Kings don't act like that, right? But it changed my life to where now I don't do this, I don't preach, I don't, I don't do anything in my life except out of a thankful heart for what he done and, and to do it for him because I love him, because he loves me so much. It's hard. It's hard not to love him back when he's like that, right? So now I got this God that loves me so much and that I can't get away from and the same God that I used to equate with religion, which, which would, would kill, try to kill you, literally, with their mouth, or with their actions, or with their rules, come unto me and I'll give you lots of burdens. And maybe one day you'll live up to where maybe you won't go to hell. That's not the scripture. He says, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The rest doesn't come through our works. The rest came from his work, from his finished work, from his heart to our heart. And when we receive that and rest in that completeness, we're still walking out our faith. We're still growing, but it's completely finished. Just like the universe is expanding exponentially. We're expanding exponentially in his love, in his creation, in his... The old things are falling off, and we're getting prettier every day. I look in the mirror every morning. I didn't think you could get any prettier. I just, 
I just can't believe it. Like, I'm in my prime. But I felt like I was in my prime since I was two. You know? I'd go to the store and I was like, look at that picture, honey. That's the best picture I ever seen. She said, what are you talking about? Right there. She's like, that's not a picture. That's a mirror. Right? We can have God's grace and we can, we can love ourselves and love him and know that he's with us. So the man upstairs... Like, what if, what if the man upstairs is up here, too? We have the mind of Christ. I didn't say that. The Word said it. I was like, you know what? What if they're halfway right? He is upstairs, but he's also in us. So technically, he's upstairs, too. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of our mind. Where is that at? Right in her head. So I do need to talk to the man upstairs. Only the man upstairs, is he upstairs? Yes, he is. Right? But he's also here. He's everywhere. So that means I don't got to go upstairs to talk to him. But if I want to go upstairs, I can just close my eyes and just, just be with him. I don't have to think nothing. Sometimes that's the best prayer. It's just I just close my eyes and I just... Breathe, and I'm just like silent. I'm like, hey, daddy. <laughs> He's like, hey, handsome. That's my boy. And then you steal your heart, and all the stuff of the world fades away. And then we can just trust in what he's saying. We can actually hear what he's saying. It's listening to the mission moment about the school of the deaf or, or churches for, for deaf people. And I'm like, we need that for, for deaf people that can hear too. Let him who has ears, let him hear. Not just, not just in the physical hearing, but in our spirit too. So I had this horse. And, and I got her, and she was by a famous reigning stallion, but he's deaf. And a lot of his foals were deaf. So when I got her, I was working her, and like she couldn't hear me. And I talk a lot to the horses and move them around. And I was frustrated. And I was like, and I talk to God when I'm training horses because He gives me a lot of clues. That's why I'm a great trainer, is because He's the best. Like I got a great mentor, right? And I, I was like getting so frustrated because like I was always I was just thinking about her her limitation rather than, than what she really is and who she really is. And, and I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I guess I just can't train a deaf horse. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, just because she's deaf doesn't mean she can't hear. And I went, oh. He's like, treat her like a horse. And you know what I did? I started talking to her like other horses because you put her out in a pasture with other horses and you know what? She feels their energy. She, she feels the other horses. She don't hear them, but she, she's even more sensitive and more alert, so she was even better, easier to train. So that's what I did. I just started treating her like she's another horse. And you know what happened? Everything just melted. And God is right. Just because she can't hear doesn't mean she can't hear. Just because you can't hear doesn't mean you can't hear. There's a Hebrew, it's called the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Is hear, O Israel, the Lord is God. He is one. Love Him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength, or with all your soul. Right? What is that? Shema in Hebrew doesn't just mean hear, it means to hear. It means to hear. And so that's what we have. We, we hear God. We see God. You know you can see without your eyes? So all these, like, like all these senses we have are ju just um, types and shadows of the spiritual senses we have. Think about that. We can hear. We can see with the eyes of our spirit. 
And God's, God's like, I want you to see when you can't see. I want you to hear when you can't hear. Maybe someone's telling you something different, and God's like, I didn't say that. That's not what I said about your life. Maybe one says you're rotten and you have no hope and no future, and God says, that's not true. I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. Do you hear? Do you hear me now? I feel like I'm in a Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? That's what God, he created that commercial just so he could get your attention. Can you hear me now? He's like, you think it's the cell coverage. It's not. It's me. It's my coverage. And it's way better than Verizon's coverage. <laughs> it's even better than Starlink with the satellites, right? Can you hear me now, he says. So here we're coming into 1 Samuel chapter 16. And, and they had asked for a king. They wanted something they could see here, maybe not taste. Touch. I'm sure they didn't want to smell him all the time unless he smelled good, right? But they wanted a, a man. I want a man. Remember that the guy, man at the pool of Bethsaida when Jesus come up to me and, and he, he's like, why are you laying here? And he's like, I have no man. And Jesus is standing for him and he says, pick up your bed and walk. He's like, you don't need a man, you just need me. And here the Israelites were looking for a man to save them. And so they send Samuel, which means heard of God. Remember the Shema I was telling you about? Shmael, that's his name, right? El is God, right? Heard of God. So, so God sends Samuel, Samuel and he says, you know what? I've given them what they ask for. I've given them exactly what they asked for, and it ain't working for me. Like, I'm showing them that it's not, it's not all cut up. You're, their problems that they were facing were because they put their faith in man. They put their faith in what they had asked for, what they could see, instead of the God that they couldn't see. They could see the effects of him. He's like the wind. How many of you believe the, the, in the wind? The wind blows. How many of you have ever seen the wind? Just me? I'm from Oklahoma and we have tornadoes. Yeah, so technically I've kind of seen the wind. It's going like this and it turns black. But really, I haven't seen the wind. Can you see the wind? No but you can feel the effects of the wind. Well, that tree, it's not moving. Oh my gosh, it's moving and I don't see anything that's moving it. This is spooky. Like we don't even think twice about that. Horses do, right? Wind's blowing. Oh my gosh, I gotta act up. The wind's blowing, right? But we, we're, oh, it's just the wind. Well, how do you know it's the wind? Do you see the wind? Well, you can feel the wind. You can see the effects of the wind. And that's the, the Spirit of God, and that's who He is. So, so here, they're like, I want to see. Now they're seeing the effects of the man that they had asked for, and God's like, yeah, ain't going to work. So he sends Samuel, heard of God, to this dude named Jesse, and it starts out with this. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for what you ask for, or Saul? He said, since I have rejected him, as king over Israel. Now, see, this is the same with religion. Now, not all religion literally, I think, means something like of the spirit. Like, like um, but when we get into legalism, then what we're saying is I'm asking for what me to do it. I'm going to do it in my own strength. Thanks, God, you said on set on the sidelines. And that's exactly what they were doing. It's no different than what they were doing. And then we see the effects of what we ask for. It's up to us. Okay, God, I got this. You sat on the sidelines. Or then when we get in a big jam, oh, God, please, please help. And he's always faithful to help us through it. But how about instead we just like, I'm just going to rest in you. I'm just going to rest in your promise. No matter what comes at me, I'm going to trust what your promises say over what I see. And the flesh. 
So he says, the Lord said to Samuel, heard of God, how long will you mourn for Saul? What you ask for, since I have rejected him as king over Israel. If he had rejected a man's leadership over Israel, why would he want us to have all that responsibility for our own salvation in ourselves? He's not. He rejected it. That's why faith comes through Jesus and Jesus alone, because he's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. It comes through Jesus. And so he says, I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. Now, Jesse in Hebrew means he exists, right? In the house of bread, right? And so he says, I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. God says, you know what? I got a different plan. I, I got a better plan. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You're going to do follow my instructions and watch what I say and I will show you the way to walk in. I will show you the person that is going to be the new king because he's not going to be just the king. He's, I'm going to be the king in and through him. And that's what God wants to do in your heart. He's, he's like, I want to crown you. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. Royal, you're kings. You're queens. You're princesses. You are holy. You're a priesthood. Now watch. So he says, I've come to invite Jesse to sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Except one. He forgot one. And when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands be here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. See, Samuel's going back to the same thing that he'd went back to with, with Saul. He's saying, hey, I, this this got to be what I asked for because it looks exactly what I want in the flesh. Sometimes God gives us things and we're like, is that it? I'd rather have this over here. God's like, no, I got something better for you. Better than you ever even imagined. Will you trust me? Now watch. He says... But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the, at the heart. So I was reading, and, and I found this scripture, and it says this. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by sight and not by flat, faith. No. That's not right. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 5. We walk by sight and not by... That's not right? Are you guys sure? Well, what's wrong? Oh, we don't walk? It, we, like we run? We walk by what? By faith? And not by faith? That don't make sense. Walk by sight. Oh, you want me to switch them. Okay. 
I'll switch him. No, no. No? You said to switch it. Oh. And not by. Oh, that almost goes with what I'm reading. That's a coincidence. You know what? I better read that just to make sure that I'm not lying to you guys, right? What do you think? Can I read it? Yeah. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the whole, I'm going to start in five and read, read seven verses for context. Now, we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. Well, that makes sense. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. What is the deposit? And what does it do? It guarantees what is to come, right? Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith. We live by what? Faith. Not by sight. And so, now let me go over here. I'm almost out of time, and I've got to be done by one. Hebrews 11.1 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do see. Do not see. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. We don't walk by... We walk by faith and not by what? Sight. Huh. So this is what the ancients were commended for? By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Does that even make sense? What's that? He made it out of nothing. People say, well, I'm just a nobody. I'm a nothing. I'm like, well, that's good news for you. It is. Tell you training horses, it's a lot better off to work with a horse that's never been touched than a horse that's been messed up by somebody. Like I'd rather be a nothing before God than a somebody in the eyes of man. Because God has a habit of taking the nobodies and making them somebody. And then he's got a list here. He says, by faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice. By what did he do it? By faith. Then Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that, that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken he was commended as one who pleased God. And he did it through works, right? No, it said by what? By faith. And then it says this, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone comes to him must what? Do good works? Must be perfect? Must what? Must what? Believe. Must, I can't hear you guys. Believe. Believe. Oh, that's what it says here. Huh, what a coincidence. And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Seek who? God. So I just pray for you guys. I know we're coming up 
into a season that can be a hard season, believe it or not. Thanksgiving and Christmas, and um, which should be a good season for everyone, but there's so much that goes on for many people there's not. Maybe you're out there and you're dreading this. I'm telling you, God says, don't just look with your eyes, but look with his eyes, because he's got a great plan for you. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep moving, because he's so much greater than anything you can face. So just put your trust in him and know that he loves you and that he's all you need. Amen? Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.